Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. An eyepiece reticule is a transparent scale placed in the eyepiece of a microscope. On its own, the reticule has no fixed unit. Its scale changes with magnification. It must be calibrated using a stage micrometer, which has a non-scale. Once calibrated, the reticule allows accurate measurement of structures in the specimen. B is wrong because it is not magnified by the objective lens, as it is not on the microscope stage. C is wrong because the objective and eyepiece lenses do the magnifying, not the eyepiece reticule. D is wrong because we don't have to calibrate it if we only want to make comparisons. A is correct because the cell walls appear to be a thick band under the electron microscope. It is not seen in the photo. B is incorrect because animal cells do not have a permanent vacuole. C is wrong because chloroplasts cannot be seen. D is incorrect because lysosomes are not found in plant cells. All cells undergo respiration. Prokaryotic cells do not have ATS ribosomes, so this statement is wrong. Bacteria only have circular DNA. Eukaryotic cells have circular DNA in their mitochondria and chloroplasts. Cell structures bound by a single membrane include secretory vesicles, rough ER, and Golgi bodies. Goblet cells specialize in secreting mucus. They have these structures abundantly because they are involved in the synthesis, packaging, and secretion of mucus by exocytosis. A is wrong. They can form hydrogen bonds after becoming polar, but the bonding doesn't cause polarity. B is incorrect. Phosphate hats are soluble in water due to their polarity. It is the fatty acid tails that are insoluble. The correct answer is C. The phosphate hats of phospholipids are hydrophilic because they become ionized in water, gaining a negative charge. This charge makes them polar, allowing them to interact with water molecules via hydrogen bonding. D is incorrect. Their interactions with water molecules happen via hydrogen bonds, not covalent bonds. 1 is incorrect. Cellulose chains do not coil off from a triple helix. Instead, they form straight chains that align to create strong microfibules and fibers. 2 is correct. Cellulose molecules run parallel and form many hydrogen bonds with each other, which collectively provide high tensile strength. 3 is wrong. Covalent bonds form within each cellulose molecule, joining the monomers together. Between molecules, it is hydrogen bonds. Alpha glucose has an OH group and a hydrogen attached to carbon number 1. The OH group is below the plan. A condensation reaction occurs when we want to join molecules together by removing water. B and C are reactions that involve the joining of molecules. Water is produced as a byproduct, so D is also correct. A is the opposite reaction. Hydrolysis occurs when we want to break a glycosidic bond. A is wrong because, as long as there is more than one polypeptide, it is a quaternary structure. It does not have to be four. B is incorrect as well. While quaternary structure can refer to a protein that associates with a non-protein component, it does not have to be a metal ion. C is correct. The amino acid sequence in those polypeptides determines the bonds that can form between them. This will affect the association of these polypeptides into a protein molecule. D is wrong. Alpha and beta polypeptides are true for hemoglobin, but it is not a fact about all the proteins that have a quaternary structure. A is wrong because if Q is an inhibitor, they wouldn't form an ES complex. Moreover, they have complementary shapes. Therefore, if Q is an inhibitor, it acts as a competitive inhibitor. B is incorrect because if P is the enzyme and Q is the substrate, the activation energy should decrease. C is the answer. R and S have complementary shapes to the active site of P, so it is possible that they can bind to each other. D is wrong. Judging from the shapes, we cannot break P to get S and R. It is more likely to break Q to get them. The rates of reaction should be the highest at all substrate concentrations when there is no inhibitor. Competitive inhibition can be overcome by a high substrate concentration, so Vmax can still be achieved. A non-competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme's allosteric site. 
it cannot be overcome by increasing substrate concentration. So, Vmax is not reached even when the substrate concentration is high. The Michaelis Menten constant is the substrate concentration at which an enzyme catalyzed reaction reaches half of its maximum velocity. It reflects the affinity of an enzyme for its subject, where a lower Km indicates a higher affinity. Enzyme affinity refers to the strength of the interaction and attraction between an enzyme and its subject. A and D are incorrect because Km doesn't provide this information. C is wrong because the whole graph with different subject concentrations show you the affinity. This statement indicates that it shows different affinity at different concentrations. To calculate how many times catalase is faster, we divide its turnover number by the phosphatase turnover number. You will get around 2883.6. The formula to calculate the total surface area of a cube is 6 times length square. Its volume is length times width times height. Then, turn them into the simplest ratio. The cube with the greatest surface area to volume ratio allows the highest rates of diffusion and takes the shortest time to change its color completely. The membrane of the Golgi body forms secretory vesicles that contain the glycoprotein. Then, microtubules in the cytoplasm help the movement of the vesicles towards the cell surface membrane. When the vesicle fuses with the cell surface membrane, its contents are released. This is exocytosis. When the water potential of the cells is similar to that of the surrounding solution, the rate of osmosis is low due to the small water potential gradient. This causes little net movement and hence a small change in mass. The chromosome number cannot increase after a cell cycle. The volume of cytoplasm decreases after cytokinesis. It will increase again in the next interface. The length of telomeres decreases after each round of DNA replication. The enzyme that copies DNA, DNA polymerase, can't fully replicate the very ends of chromosomes, leading to a gradual loss of DNA at the telomeres with each cell division. Chromosomes lie up at the equator of the spindle during metaphase. One is correct. The cell cycle includes interphase, nuclear division, and cytokinesis. Two is correct. DNA replication occurs during S phase which is the second stage of interface. 3 is also true. A cell that is not dividing will stay in interface. If the cell has 38 chromosomes, at telophase, there will be 38 chromosomes in each of the dotted nuclei. The chromosomes have only one chromatid. So, each of them has two telomeres found at the two ends. A and C label the lagging and leading strands incorrectly. The one that is synthesized continuously is the leading strand. A and B show the direction of synthesis incorrectly. DNA is synthesized from the 5' prime to the 3' prime end. The deletion of a single nucleotide results in a frame shift mutation. It disrupts the normal 3x3 3 3 reading frame during protein synthesis, leading to a completely different amino acid sequence from the mutation point onwards, and potentially a non-functional protein. D correctly describes the change. A is not quite possible because frame shift mutation wouldn't change all the codons to the new ones that still code for the same amino acid. B and C are wrong because they state that only one amino acid is affected in the polypeptide. One is the correct definition of translation. Two is wrong. It states what happened during transcription. Three incorrectly named the bonds. tRNA anticodons and mRNA codons form complementary base pairing by hydrogen bonds, not peptide bonds. The mRNA is complementary to the transcribed strain in DNA. The transcribed strain is complementary to the non-transcribed strain in DNA. Therefore, mRNA has the same code as the non-transcribed strain with the nucleotide thymine replaced by uracil. Cohesion is the attraction between water molecules due to the hydrogen bonding between them. Both the height latent heat of vaporization and the height specific heat capacity of water are also due to hydrogen bonds, as a large quantity of heat energy is needed to overcome the bonds for water to evaporate and changes its temperature by 1 degree Celsius. However, 
the solvent action of water relies on its ability to form bonds with the substances dissolved in it. It is not about the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules themselves. Cellulose is fully permeable to water, while lignin is generally hydrophobic. Both these play a great tensile strength. They provide mechanical support, preventing the cell wall from collapsing under pressure. A is wrong because the peripheral cytoplasm can be seen as a gray zone in the photomicrograph. B is incorrect because the darkly stained structures are in the lumen, not in the cytoplasm. They cannot be the mitochondria. They might be some substances being transported in the sieve tube element. C is the answer. D is wrong as mitochondria are labeled, and shedding is not acceptable in a scientific drawing. At the companion cell, protons are transported out actively to the apoplast to create a proton gradient. It will then diffuse back to the companion cell down its concentration gradient. Sucrose is co-transported with protons into the companion cell. Glucose is converted to sucrose before the loading process, as it is more reactive than sucrose. This may lead to unwanted reactions, making it a less suitable candidate for transportation. A points to the graph of ventricular pressure. The increase is due to ventricular systole. B is the answer. The first increase of atrial pressure in the cycle is due to atrial systole. C is a second, sharp but brief rise in atrial pressure. This happens because the atrial ventricular valves close suddenly at the start of the ventricular contraction. The pressure in ventricles pushes the closed AV valves slightly back into the atria, causing a brief increase in atrial pressure. D points to the decreasing pressure in the aorta. This happens as blood travels away in the blood vessel. The rhythm of our heartbeats is set by the sinoatrial node, hence the name pacemaker. Its damage can lead to irregular impulses being sent to the atrial wall, causing an irregular contraction of the atrium. As carbon dioxide concentration increases, the graph shifts to the right. This means at the same partial pressure of oxygen, hemoglobin has a lower percentage saturation, indicating a lower affinity. The release of oxygen is more favorable than the binding. When there is a high partial pressure of oxygen, the iron ion in the hem group of hemoglobin combines with oxygen, forming oxyhemoglobin. 2 and 3 show what happens when there is a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. These events occur near the respiring tissue, not in the alveolus. Cartilage is found in the trachea and bronchus. It provides structural support to keep the airways open and prevent it from collapsing during breathing. It is not found in small airways and air sacs because they need to be flexible to allow for airflow regulation. It is also not found in blood vessels, which rely on their flexibility to function. Near the alveoli, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher in the blood, leading to its diffusion from the blood into the alveolar space. It is the opposite for oxygen, so that it diffuses now the partial pressure gradient from the blood to the alveolar space. B shows the correct gradient. Cartilage in the trachea prevents it from collapsing. It forms a C-shaped ring, which is shown in A. B points to the outermost line. It does not label any layer. C is the submucosa layer. It is composed of loose connective tissue and contains important structures such as blood vessels, nerves, and mucous glands. D is the mucosa layer. It is the innermost lining of the trachea, composed of ciliated epithelial cells and goblet cells. The alveolar wall is made up of squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium is characterized by thin and flat cells. Endothelium is a specialized type of squamous epithelium that lines the inner surface of blood and lymphatic vessels. Penicillin works by inhibiting the enzymes involved in the formation of crosslinks between peptidoglycans, the main component of bacterial cell wall. This causes a weaker cell wall leading to cell bursts when water enters by osmosis. A is correct. Without an outer membrane, it is easier for penicillin to affect the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria. B is wrong because gram-positive bacteria have thicker peptidoglycan cell walls. C is wrong. Gram-negative bacteria have a protective outer membrane. Also, 
the thin peptidoglycan cell wall means that it has a lower proportion in the overall structure, thereby reducing its impact on the cell. D is wrong. The periplasmic space in gram-negative bacteria does not weaken the structure. One is wrong as TB is a bacterial infection. Two is wrong. There are a few different species of mycobacterium that can cause TB, such as mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis. Three is correct. HIV AIDS leads to a weaker immune system, increasing the risk of TB. Four and five correctly describe the transmission of mycobacterium bovis. Six is true. This is one of the major problems in controlling TB. The first event is the engulfing of the pathogen by phagocytes. Then, antigen presentation occurs. T helper cells are activated. They release cytokines to stimulate other cells such as killer T and B lymphocytes. Plasma cells will then secrete antibodies. Statement 1 is correct. When they mutate, our immune system will not recognize them even if there was an infection before. This causes a reduced efficiency in removing them because the primary immune response is triggered again instead of the secondary immune response. 2 and 3 correctly describe the consequences of a weaker immune system. Immunocompromised individuals have a higher risk of getting the same infection more than once. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.